All right, so this is again Nielsen data. Is it on? Am I on? Am I on? Check, check, check. All right. So let's see. Tat, no, let's do a describe. So this is how the data comes from Nielsen. And we, we I think you got this on, on, yeah, this is similar to what you got last week. We're going to have to play with this data uh, a bit to get it to do what we want. So that's, uh, that's a good exercise in and of itself. Uh, but we've got price, we've got promotion, case volume, and then we've got, we got the different um, types of promotional activities. Uh, essentially, what we want to do is measure the effects of promotion. How do you measure the effects of promotion? It, it, are our promotions actually working? We've got to pay for these promotions, right? These are features, uh, which are mailers. These are displays, which are in-store promotions. Um, even a price reduction, you've got you to gotta, you gotta, you gotta pay for. Uh, you've got to pay for someone at Safeway to go in there and remark everything. You've got to pay, pay for someone at Safeway to hang those shelf toppings. You've got to pay for someone to, they charge you to put it at, at an end cap. They charge you to put a stack in the middle of the meat section or wherever it is. So, um, and this is true of all, remember, even though this is wine data, and again, that's one of the complaints I've had, one of the many complaints I've had for this class is too much wine data. It's, it's more like a wine class. But anything sold at the supermarket, at a grocery store, is going to have the same type of data. So that's how many different products this is applicable to. Literally, I have no idea how many products are sold in a grocery store. Can you imagine how many products are in a Safeway? You got Tide, different kinds of Tide. You got Crest. You got the Lightning Crest, the Bad Breath Crest, the all kinds of Denture Crest. Um, all right. So the first thing we need to do to do is clean up the data. Uh, we know that week is, this is weekly data. We've had four week ending data, this is week ending data. So we need to, once again, use that D string thing to pull out, pull out what we need, and then we can use that and convert it to a date. So uh, count 13, is that, was that what we used last time? 13? We used 16. 16. It had a four week in front of it. Yeah, that's right. Um, so we, so I think this one works for 13, but essentially I got to do is count. Pull it out. Let's take a look at our new variable. Nice. It's probably, probably Paul Mabry getting a clock. So. Uh, then from there, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Generator date. Um, I like to format it and then list the two so we make sure that we got them, that they're the same. <clears throat> uh, yep. Years right, months right, days right. So we did it right. And believe me, mistakes happen. So always double check. Double check your dates. Um, all right. Now we can generate our month. Let's drop our old date to. And let's see. Basically, we have we have promotion by all different types, but we have overall promoted and overall not promoted and we can see that um, more cases are sold on promotion 2300 versus off promotion um, 1400 Right? Does that prove that promotion is effective? I don't know. It depends. It, 
it always depends. Yeah, that's the answer to everything. It depends. Uh, we can test that for statistical significance. Here's a new command. But it's basically t-test. And we're testing to see if the difference between these two, and that's an equal sign, it's a single equal sign, uh, test to see if the difference between promoted volume and non-promoted volume in terms of cases is statistically different. You can see that here are the two means, 2365 uh, versus 1443. Here's the difference. So in essence, we're testing to see if that difference of 921 cases, which sounds like a lot, or perhaps not. I mean, if we're talking about you know, Gallo or some huge volume that's selling millions of cases a, uh, a week, then 900 cases would be statistically insignificant, right? You think about, you know, if you're making a million dollars a week, 900 bucks in any particular week, you're not going to miss all that much. Um, so, but uh, our difference between the two is 921 cases. The T statistic for that, and you can go through all this stuff, is over here. So, in essence, what's that, what that's telling us is that it's testing that difference and it's assuming that there is no difference. So that's what this is. It's assuming the difference between what I sold on promotion and what I sold off promotion is zero. And if that's true, right, and this is how we do hypothesis tests, tests, no hypothesis, alternative, alternative hypothesis, and this is saying that, uh, what do we do with promo? Minus non-promo uh, equals zero. Promo minus non-promo is not equal to zero. So we're just seeing if promotional volume is statistically different than non-promotional volume. If they're the same, then the difference is equal to zero. If they're not the same, then the difference is not equal to zero. And that's what this t-test is doing. So the t-statistic for this is positive, which means that promotion is greater than non-promotion. But not only is it positive, how many standard errors from the mean is it? What is that? Is that 21? Yeah. What's our rule of thumb? Two. Yeah, so we would have considered anything more than two <coughs> statistically different from zero. So we're 21 standard errors from the mean. Yeah, we're pretty confident that promotional sales are greater than non-promotional sales. That's what we're doing. We can't in its current structure, we can't really run a regression. The, the data is not set up for us to test that using a reg regression. But if we did run a regression, and when we do run a regression, we should end up with those same results. All right. Some stats. We can look at this by month because... One of the things that you probably want to do is determine when promotion has its biggest effect. So that's just for the entire data set. And we have a couple of years worth of data. <clears throat> but we have a promotion throughout the year. When should we promote? When should we not promote? When is the, the effect of promotion its biggest? When is it its weakest? So here we can take this and look at it by month. Um, let's see, we can see that, well that first month is kind of weird. Let's generate that difference. So we have to construct a difference. Let's see. So to generate difference, we'll construct something called diff. And it just equals promoted minus non-promoted. 
and that'll give us the same table, but now we have a difference. This is kind of strange. It looks like promotion in the month of January has a negative effect. It could be, yeah. So it, ha it definitely has to do with the holiday, and it, You're in recovery mode. it could it could be that 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 would be one plausible explanation. The other one is really the nature of the data. Remember that this is uh, weekly data, and um, Nielsen by convention always ends on Saturday night. So it depends on when that Saturday night was. If that Saturday night is right at the end, so a lot of the sales from New Year's and Christmas might end up being carried over into January. So even though January may not promote, a lot of sales from New Year's and Christmas may be attributed to January. So it's going to look like sales are higher non-promoted than they are when, does that make sense? <coughs> yeah. And that's the, I think that's the problem there. So we understand that, we can fix it. Um, there are ways to fix it. We can kind of prorate the data, but that tends to be more of a nasty procedure than, than it needs to be. We just need to know that, look, the, the data is probably carried over from the previous, uh, the previous month, from, from December. Um, we really want to do the same thing here. So we want to test to see if these differences, these differences in case volume are statistically different from zero. And again, I guess we'd have to do t-tests. Kind of a drag. Let's see what do file says. Uh, well, we can do that. We can run a regression. We can run a regression on the difference by month. And let's see if we can do that. Not really. It'd be nice if we show both at the same time. But we know that that first month's promotional lift, as we called it, was negative. And that would be the omitted category. So is, is it the same value, 19? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 1979167. Mm -hmm. 1979167. Wow, that's pretty cool. Kind of creepy. Uh, notice again, the T stat is really small. So it's statistically insignificant. So that even though in January it looks like promotion, has a negative effect, that negative effect is not statistically different from zero. The T stat is, is not 19, it's 0.18. Uh, again, our criteria is two, so 0.18 is, is right there around zero. So that difference in case volume of 19 cases is statistically in, uh, indistinguishable from zero. It's not statistically different from zero. The other months, we can see Let's see, how do, I, how do I interpret those? For example, in, Jan in, in February, 632 cases. Um, that's going to be the difference in promoted and non-promoted cases in January. And its T-stat is 4, which means it's statistically different. But what is it statistically different from? Exactly. It's statistically different from January. So it's not necessarily statistically different from zero. In this case, it happens to be, since this is statistically not different from zero. But it kind of works out that um, uh, in February, uh, 632 cases is statistically different from January, which essentially was zero. So we can kind of treat this, these all as, we can kind of treat these T stats as, even though this represents the, the case, the difference in promoted and non-promoted case volume in December relative to January. January is zero, so we can treat it as 
whether the promotion effect was statistically different from zero. And that was hard to say. So that helps a little bit. But outside of that, we're kind of stuck with the data right now. It's, it's really not in ideal. If you wanted to test these formally, a lot faster than it needs to be because that was all output from that one command. But if we wanted to test every month formally, we can run this command. So by, uh, by month, or in this case I use by sort, uh, by sort month, and then we're setting um, promoted volume equal to non-promoted volume, and it runs that little t-test command for every month. And is this a post regression command? Uh, no. This is not. Those are double equals on that one. That's a, <coughs> yes, it's a double equal. So this isn't a post regression command, which is nice. Because really the data is not set up to do regressions. We had to construct that difference, and that gave us the ability to do uh, a regression. But we couldn't do a regression with. Um, we would have to construct the uh, regress uh, this new variable. So in January, we know the difference was uh, 19, and that difference, the t-stat for that was 0.17 or 1.8. So we know it's not statistically different. And if you go through all this, uh, February, the difference was 6.12, statistically different from zero. Uh, March difference is, and the difference I'm reading is this difference here. So here's mean cases promoted, mean cases non promoted, difference, T stat. Um, we're in March, promotion is positive. And it does this for every month. data is set up, and, and again, this is how the data comes, uh, so to speak, out of the box from Nielsen. And in essence, what we have is all right, we got a bunch of different variables. We got that was the skew, but we got uh, volume is, is total cases, cases non-promoted, cases promoted. Cases on feature, cases on display, key cases on feature and display, cases on temporary price reduction. Then we've got Did you generate those? Or? No, these are these are this is all data. The, the only thing I've generated is um, difference. So this is how the data comes from um, Nielsen. But notice that it's a it's a wide data set, and I'm using the term intentionally. It's a wide data set. It's got all the variables in a wide format. What we need to do is take this data and reshape it. And reshape it from wide form to long form. So what we're going to do is and it's going to put the data in a format that is going to be more amenable to our analysis. So for example, we've got price uh, non-promoted and then price I assume promoted after. I think it's promo and non-promo. And then we have a whole wide array of these, right? Essentially what we want to do is, so we've got this wide format, we want to take the data and we want to create one variable called price. 
And then we're going to have a, another variable called, oops, let's call it promo. Because right now we got non-promoted, promoted, feature, display, feature and display, TPR. So we're going to take all these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six variables. We're going to take all those six variables, boil them down to one variable called price. Then we're going to identify them not as separate variables. We're going to identify them by this um, categorical variable. So we're going to get a price here of, I'm just going to make up numbers, but 12 bucks. And we're going to say that that's non-promo. We're going to get a price of 10 bucks, and we're going to say that's promo. We're going to get another price of, of uh, 9 bucks, and we're going to call that price. That's going to be the price when it was on feature. We're going to have another price call of $8, and that's going to be the price when it was on display. So instead of having a wide data set of individual variables, we're going to have, remember, essentially we're going to take, basically we're going to take all these variables, and I've forgotten, we'll do that. So we're going to take, let's see, instead of columns, all these rows. Yeah. So right now we have 312 rows. So we're going to take, so each column has 312 observations. We're going to take let's start with price, but it, I mean, it's the same with cases though. So we'll just go back to well, since we're already talking about price, let's do price. Cases, there's price. Well, there's an average price too. There's 312 of these, right? There's 312 of these. 312 of these. We're going to take all 312 of these and paste them underneath the 312 of these. How are we going to know which are which? All of these are going to be indicated by um, non-promo. How are we going to know which ones are these? They're going to be indicated by promo. How are we going to know which ones are these? They're going to be indicated by feature. So this is Instead of 312, we're going to have 312 plus 312, which is going to be 624. Then we're going to take this 312 and <laughs> yeah, and keep going. So our data set is going to go from Y to does the do the visuals help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, by doing that, we're going to be deleting these ones. Nope. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. No, we're just reshaping it. They're still going to be there, but they're going to be. There's going to be, you know, you just won't be I mean, but if we were to open the data, we wouldn't see them like that. You wouldn't see them like this anymore. Yeah. You're going to okay. say, yeah, you'll save it in, under a new name, for example. Uh, so you'd have a different data set. So you can call this one whatever it's called. You can call the other one wide, I'm sorry, long format or something like that. Once we do that, we'll be able to do some of the stuff that we're used to doing. Because right now we've got, um, yeah, it's going to be tough to... To, to analyze the data in the format that it's in. But first thing you got to know is what, what do I need? And, and a lot of the times what we need is data in long format. And data usually comes in a wide format. Now, the way Stata does this is pretty good. And this is something that I've already done. Is that, <clears throat> notice that we've got price here. And then non-promoted. We've got price here, and then promo. We've got price here, and then feature. Price, and then display. Price, and then... So if there's a pattern in the variables, and if there isn't a pattern in the variables, you need to make, rename them so that there is a pattern in the variables. If there's a pattern in the variables, all you got to do is tell state about that pattern. Pull out price, take promo, create this new categorical, and then keep reshaping the data set. So as long as there's a pattern in the data set, and this pattern holds for price, notice the pattern in, in, uh, in, in uh, how I named it. It should be the same in, for cases, whoops. Yep, 
cases non-promo, cases promo, feature, display. So I know all these go together, so I named them in a similar fashion. And it, you know, it, it only takes, um, you know, to rename the variables, it only takes a second to you know, rename this to that. But actually, Nielsen data comes in a pretty consistent um, nomenclature, name, name type. I don't think they did it in, for this, but it's just just the way that they do. That the the same naming convention holds for ACV, which is our measure of distribution, and that's it. So we got really three variables. We're not even going to use ACV in this case. So we're going to take a data set, we're going to take a data set that is, is that all of it? There's got to be more information. Yeah. We're going to take a data set that has 300 observations, which means there's 300 rows of data, but it's got 26 variables. But in essence, we really only have three variables, right? We've got case, price, ACV. So we need to take all those 20, not all of them, because some of those are months and stuff, but we're going to take a bunch of those 26 variables, shrink them down into three. So the three main variables that we want are price and case. We're going to have a lot fewer um, variables, but we're going to have a lot more observations. Remember that the number of observations is going, to, is going to increase in multiples of 312, depending on how many categories we have. Once we do that, we can start doing what we need to do. Because right now, it's really not set up to do this. This is one of the problems with <clears throat> how stuff gets done in the field, in practice, is because the data is really not set up to do analytics. So step one in doing analytics is restructuring your data. That's the heart that, that really is a big obstacle for a lot of people. I, I think I told you this last week, that was one of the criticisms I heard of, uh, of employers was, the data is in the right format, you guys are good to go. But if it's not, you're kind of stuck, you're stumbling. So, this is probably you know, step one, at least in terms of uh, Nielsen data, but not just Nielsen data, but most data comes in wide formats. That's just the way accounting or finance and marketing and all those people do that stuff. All right, any questions? What we're doing? We haven't done it yet. You're going to be amazed by the command. I'm going to do one thing first. I'm going to generate the number of observations because I need that. And then that's the command. So reshape long. Sorry, reshape long. So we're going to reshape a wide data set to a long data set. Cases, after every case is, is some sort of um, um, suffix, right? After every price is some sort of suffix. After every ACV is some sort of suffix. So for each, that's why I created observation, because you've got to tell it what to do it by. For each observation, and remember, all this does, we've done this before, that's how we create our time, right? Mm -hmm. All that does is create a number, 1 through 312. So if we were to summarize uh, underscore, I'm sorry, if we were to sum summarize observations, it would just be a linear number from 1 through 312. It's saying for every, for Every one of those 312 observations, break those apart and start appending them underneath. This tells me to construct a new variable called promo that's going to help me. And I can call this anything I want. So this is a name I'm going to call it promo. And it's going to create, and these are words, right? And words in computer lingo are called strings. It's going to create this string. If this was, um, did we do, if this was, um, if you ever look at like annual data, annual data, I don't know why, but 
Businesses often keep data in Excel spreadsheets where you've got, you know, instead of us, like we normally have years down, they'll have you know, 1980, 1981, you know, they'll have 40 years of data, but it's year's sales. And normally we have the, for us, we flip it. We have it in, this is in wide format, and we have it in long format. If, uh, if we were doing this for years, years would be an actual number, so we wouldn't need to put that string there. We would create this new variable called year. And that's it. <clears throat> that tiny little command is going to take this and, and transform the data set into a usable data set. This is a super cool, powerful uh, command. And let's stop talking about it. Let's do it. Was that cool or what? Hmm. It tells you what it did. It took 312 observations from the Y data set, and now we have a data set of 1,872 observations. It took 27 variables and boiled them down to 14, and then it kind of tells you the, uh, the uh, kind of the syntax that followed. Cases display, cases featured, da 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 da, that, that's how we got cases. Prices displayed, prices featured, dot, 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 that's how we got price. And then it did the same thing for ACD. <clears throat> so if we look at the data set now, and this is how I've normally been giving you the data sets. Oops. So we have... <clears throat> Uh, observations, which we don't need, um, week, skew, volume, cases, price, uh, date, month, and year. So all those things are still working. Uh, different still works too, by the way. If we tab promo, remember promo is the variable we create. create. It's that string that was cut off of each one of our price cases and ACV. So this is the promo variable that was constructed in the reshape command, and it indicates whether or not each individual observation is on display, was feature in display, was feature, was non-promoted, promoted, or TPR. It puts them in um, uh, alphabetical. 